Guys, if you like Dragon Ball Hakai, today is the best day for you to subscribe to our Patreon. We started publishing about three pages a day of the next chapter of Dragon Ball Hakai. In addition, you will also have access to several other stories created by our team, including Dragon Ball Shinken. By collaborating with our Patreon, you help us keep Dragon Ball Hakai alive and have a lot of benefits. Become a member of our community too. The link is in the video description and in the pinned comment. I'm waiting for you there. Fly to the limits, look out below and you will see the clouds beneath, way up high where no one is there. Break out your spirit, you know it's waiting to be dead, so ride it from the wind. These guys come Sights are set upon the land we love And vibes are the cue for me Fight, fight, fight I'll guard the planet like a shield for a night So no, I won't stop fighting till it's over Episode 44, The Dawn of Evil, Part 3 After revealing her special transformation that shows his true face and evil energy, Kusu warns Gogeta to prepare because now he will face Daishinkan's firstborn daughter. Gogeta does as she says, positioning himself for combat. However, instead of showing fear or tension, he smiles with excitement, telling her to do her worst. Kusu, with a malevolent smile, raises her hand and a dark aura begins to surround her, growing in intensity. Dark energy pulses around her, transforming the environment. With a quick movement, Kusu disappears from sight, suddenly appearing behind Gogeta. He, however, already anticipates the movement and turns around in time to block the attack with his forearm. The impact is overwhelming, causing an explosion of energy that momentarily knocks them away. Gogeta, wasting no time launches a key blast towards Kusu, who deftly dodges it, moving in for a counter-attack. She strikes with a sequence of quick kicks and punches, each one packed with devastating force. Gogeta defends himself with agility, countering some of the blows and dodging others. The battle unfolds at breakneck speed. Gogeta, in one fluid movement, manages to grab Kusu's arm during one of her attacks, pulling her in for a direct blow to the abdomen. Kusu gasps in pain, but quickly regains her balance, spinning in the air and launching a sphere of black energy towards Gogeta. Gogeta crosses his arms, forming an energy shield to protect himself. The resulting explosion is enormous, creating a crater on the battlefield. Then, they both move forward at the same time, colliding in the center with a force that causes the ground to shake and the dust that rose up around because of the explosion to dissipate. The exchange of blows resumes, and Gogeta immediately realizes that Kusu is indeed a level beyond the other angels he has faced so far. Kusu extends one of her arms while wrapping it around a scythe of dark energy to attack the Saiyan with a sequence of cuts. To escape the fatal attacks, Gogeta makes his body turn into smoke at the exact moment the dark energy scythe hits him, as he saw Smoker do when he was in the reality of ninjas and pirates and also as he saw the monster Hirudgarn do a while ago. After avoiding the worst attacks, Gogeta begins to fight back by forming a key sword in his hand to counter the scythe's attacks, thus starting a duel of blades against Kusu. Surprisingly, 
Gogeta wields the sword like a true master swordsman, catching Kusu off guard with all this mastery and managing to land some shallow cuts which are only not worse thanks to the angel's dodging skills. Seeing her disadvantage in this type of confrontation, Kusu moves away while covering her recoil by firing multiple spheres of energy at Gogeta, who deftly deflects them all with his sword. Annoyed, Kusu undoes her scythe and asks how he can be so skilled in wielding swords if until today she only knew of him fighting using his fists. Gogeta says that Goku and Vegeta had the opportunity to meet good swordsmen recently, so he had access to their skills. Motivated by irritation, Kusu raises her evil key even further. Gogeta decides to return to fighting with his fists and cancels the energy sword. Gohan is thrown back by the impact of Ram's attack, his body plowing through a series of rock formations before stabilizing in the air. He struggles to catch his breath, his eyes still fixed on his opponent. Her transformation seems to have an inexplicable effect on him, and he cannot understand why his body does not respond to his brain's attack commands. Rum slowly approaches, her presence exuding an irresistible aura. Are you starting to understand Gohan? She asks, her voice filled with a mixture of sweetness and danger. My power is not just physical. As the angel of beauty and doom, I possess the ability to influence the minds and emotions of my opponents. Gohan tries to shake his head to clear his thoughts, but the feeling of being hypnotized remains. Is this mind manipulation? He asks, confusion evident in his tone. Something like, Rum responds with an enigmatic smile. My appearance is not just for show, it is a weapon capable of destabilizing the concentration of my enemies, weakening them from the inside out. Gohan clenches his fists, trying to focus his energy again. He says no matter what trick Rum uses, he will win. Rum laughs softly, her laugh echoing across the skies of hell. She moves forward again, moving with an almost supernatural grace. This time, Gohan tries to block her attacks, but his movements are slow and uncoordinated, as if he is fighting a fog in his mind. Rum seizes the opportunity, delivering a series of quick precise blows, each hitting a vital spot and causing intense pain. You can be strong, Gohan, Rum murmurs, her voice close to his ear as she hits him with a powerful knee. But brute strength isn't everything in a battle. Gohan struggles to his feet, his body aching and his mind in turmoil. He knows he needs to find a way to free himself from Rum's influence, but he can't think clearly. Bula exchanges blows against a group of enemy soldiers when she sees her brother in trouble. This brief moment of distraction is enough for the angel soldiers to surround her and attempt a joint attack from all directions. Of course, this is nothing for Vegito's daughter, who disappears from where she is almost as fast as a teleport, leaving all opponents to hit nothing but air. She reappears above them with a globe of power that, when launched, crushes them all at once. After that, Bula hurries to fly out of there. Gohan fights with all his might, however, Ram's influence over his mind continues to hinder his movements and thoughts. He is hit repeatedly by the angel's precise and cruel blows. This is about to change when a powerful beam of energy crosses the battlefield towards Ram, forcing the angel to quickly dodge and move away from Gohan. The person responsible for this was his half-sister, Bula. Floating in the air, her aura shining brightly now revealing Super Saiyan 4. Bula arrives at Gohan's side scolding him. After everything you've been through, would you really be defeated by a trick like that? Gohan feels embarrassed in a way and apologizes. As she approaches them, Room shows some irritation, complaining about being interrupted. Bula says that from now on, she will be Rum's opponent. Gohan disapproves, asking if she can fight an angel alone. Bula says that Rum doesn't seem to be that powerful, excluding her weird ability. Gohan agrees, noting that Rum's overall power is not that much greater than Vod's power, who was the weakest among all the evil angels. Still, he insists that Bula won't be able to defeat her alone. Bula ends up giving in and agreeing. She then asks her brother, Hey Gohan, go at once and look for someone who can help me in this fight. Gohan finally decides to do as she says and leaves in a hurry. Bula moves forward to attack Ram, starting the confrontation. Already in the first exchanges of blows, the disadvantage of the Saiyan woman is noticeable. In another part of the battlefield, an uneven fight takes place between the angel Weinek 
and the two androids Super 16 and Super 13. Wayneck's dancing movements, although bordering on the ridiculous, are perfectly effective compared to the robotic movements of the two androids, who have all their blows gently dodged or deflected amidst the angel's graceful spins. Such spins, while resulting in smooth dodges and defenses, also manifest themselves in powerful counter-attacks, propelled by the power acquired at the end of each turn performed in Wynick's true battle dance. Super Android 13 concentrates a huge amount of power in his hands in the form of an energy sphere that he throws with all his strength against Wynick. The angel's reaction comes with a spin followed by a kick that deflects the attack towards Super Android 16, who needs to use his arms to defend himself from the allied fire, being hit by a huge explosion. Wynek then counterattacks, spinning like a tornado of light towards Super Android 13, reaching the battle machine at a speed that makes it impossible for the robot to react and finishing his spin with an extremely powerful kick that simply shatters the body of Super Android 13. As soon as the smoke that surrounded him after the explosion of the energy sphere launched by Super 13 dissipates, Super 16 already sees Wynick in front of him, finishing a spin ready to land a probably fatal kick. At the last moment, Gohan intervenes, arriving as fast as light in front of Super 16 to block Wayneck's kick, thus stopping the angel's attack and saving the android. With his attack thwarted, Wynek retreats. Super 16 asks why Gohan intervened. Gohan says that he will fight this angel from now on and asks Super 16 to help Bula. You are a complete machine, therefore you have no human feelings, right? You are perfect to help Bula against Rum. The more blows are exchanged, the more Bula finds it difficult to continue the fight, having all of her attacks avoided by Rum while most of her counter-attacks hit her. At one point, Rum escapes a blow from Bula and almost instantly moves to her back, grabbing her in a very suggestive hug. With the enemy's touch, Bula momentarily feels her body weaken, and this weakening becomes more pronounced as Rum brings her face closer to the Saiyan's ear, speaking softly in her ear with the intention of bewitching her. Rum says Bula must have thought she would resist her power because she is a woman. If this is the case, she could not be more wrong, as her charms work regardless, as they have direct power over human feelings. Unfortunately for her, Bula counters by exploding her key in a way that pushes the evil angel back. Rum asks how she is able to resist like this. Bula explains that she is a scientist and has always preferred to adhere to logic and reason over feelings and pleasures. Even though it's not easy for her, her mind is somehow conditioned to resist this kind of thing. Their conversation is interrupted when Room notices a beam of light approaching from behind and she quickly dodges, letting the attack pass straight through. That ray of light was Super Android 16, who stops next to Bula after being dribbled by Rum. Bula is pleased to see the ally that Gohan sent because as this android has no human feelings, it is the perfect resistance to the evil angel's enchantments. It doesn't matter if my enchantments work or not, I will crush both of you with my power. Rum threatens, making her irritation evident. Bula and 16 stand ready. She says she never imagined fighting side by side with Super 16, as his old version gave her a hard time when they faced each other in the past. Well, it doesn't matter now. Let's put an end to this slut angel. The Saiyan woman concludes. The vigor of the fight between Gogeta and Kusu only increases. They move so fast that they are not visible to the eyes of even extremely powerful beings, leaving only traces of energy in their wake. The sound of the impacts of their blows reverberates across the battlefield like thunder in a raging storm. Kusu raises her power even further. Her hands glow with a dark, pulsating energy. She creates several energy spheres around herself and launches them towards Gogeta in a storm of attacks. Gogeta, without hesitation, begins to dodge the spheres with precise movements, using his speed to avoid each explosion. He responds with a series of attacks, launching key blasts and charging with powerful punches and kicks. Kusu blocks and counter-attacks with an impressive technique, creating a blade of energy that cuts through the air towards Gogeta. He narrowly avoids it, 
but the blade pass is so close that it opens a superficial cut on his arm, quickly healed by the Shinken warrior. He crosses his arms in front of his chest, concentrating an immense amount of energy to launch a big bang Kamehameha. A huge wave of bright blue energy hurtles towards Kusu, who quickly raises her hands to create a barrier of black energy. The collision between the two energies creates a monumental explosion lighting up the battlefield and throwing both combatants backwards. Kusu raises her arms to the sky, summoning a pillar of dark energy that descends upon her, revitalizing her strength and increasing her power. Infernal energy is food for a daughter of darkness like me, she says. It seems that your contact with evil is even greater than that of the other angels. Darkness indeed resides powerfully in your being, Gogeta comments, observing his enemy. The Saiyan crosses his arms and begins to concentrate his inner energy, radiating the luminous power of the Shinken, seeking to subdue the oppression of Kusu's ki with his own ki. Makarita launches multiple energy lasers in a coordinated attack. Chambras is forced to dodge and block with all his remaining strength, but he still can't avoid all the shots. Each blast of energy causes more damage to his already heavily damaged body, tearing his skin and clothes. Kukatail, seeing an opening, launches a combo attack. His hands light up with intense energy, and he fires a concentrated blast directly at Chamrus's heart. The impact is crushing, causing the God of Destruction to scream in pain and be pushed back. Mojito seizes the opportunity and charges forward with a roar, raising both fists and bringing them down with titanic force. Chamrus can barely raise his arms to block, and the impact throws him to the ground, creating a deep crater. Flying over the large hole and seeing its bottom, the angels see the God of Destruction lying face down, motionless. They wonder if the destroyer has reached his limit yet. The answer is no. Despite the difficulties, Chamrus once again stands up. Mojito gets angry at this, complaining that even though he's being hit by such powerful attacks, this guy keeps getting up. Margarita is already showing signs of tiredness. On the other hand, she ends up letting out an admiring smile, stating that this guy is a tough nut to crack and truly worthy of the God of Destruction title. Kukatail emphasizes that, as admirable as this resistance is, it won't last much longer. In contrast to all his tiredness and injuries, Chamrus shouts at his enemies, telling them to bring it on because he's just getting started. At the same time that in one place on the battlefield, the God of Destruction proves his unbreakable determination before Mojito, Kukatail, and Margarita. In another place, his children do the same before Whis. Beerus and Champa, now covered by an intense aura of destructive power, following the revelation of their new transformations, advance with a speed and strength never seen before in these two, impressing even Whis. Beerus appears first firing a powerful blast of purple energy that pierces the air, while Shampa, in an equally agile move, appears behind Whis, delivering a devastating blow. Whis dodges Beerus's blast with a slight movement and blocks Champa's punch with one hand. Beerus and Champa team up to attack simultaneously. Whis, in turn, dodges and counterattacks with stupendous speed. The brothers, in perfect harmony, manage to pressure the evil angel alternating between physical attacks and blasts of destructive energy. Beerus concentrates energy into his hands, forming a sphere of pure destruction. Champa, realizing his brother's strategy, does the same. The two launch their spheres simultaneously, creating a huge explosion that makes the ground shake and the sky darken. Not expecting such intensity from these two's attack, Whis is momentarily enveloped by the destructive energy. The brothers waste no time and, in a synchronized movement, attack with a combination of blunt physical blows. Champa delivers a powerful punch to the abdomen, and Beerus simultaneously lands a kick to the ribs. Taking advantage of the moment, Beerus and Champa move away, still immersed in their auras of destruction, to channel all the power into their arms and discharge powerful energy torrents that hit the opponent, creating a whirlwind of destructive energy, resulting in an explosion of colossal scales. After giving their all in this offensive, the twins pant. Regardless, they are happy to have succeeded. Or at least they thought they did. The brothers' expectations are frustrated when Whis emerges from the explosions without major damage, and the only side effect of all those attacks is a slight expression of surprise on the angel's face. Whis praises the duo, 
admitting that he didn't expect such young warriors to have so much power. The problem is that their opponent is him, and they are still a long way from offering him any risk. Whis adjusts his posture, and with a quick movement appears between the two brothers, striking them with an almost imperceptible speed. Beerus and Champa are thrown back and sent to the floor. They get up with difficulty, unable to hide their tiredness and desolation. It doesn't take more than a few seconds for them to lose their transformations. Beerus notes that their time is up and laments. Champa starts to whine, saying that Whis is going to kill them this way. Beerus seem more resigned, saying that at least they did the best they could. Champa doesn't accept this, and retorts saying that they still have something to do. Beerus don't like that at all. Going back in time a little, more precisely to the younger people's training period with Gogeta, in the dimension where time passes more slowly, Beerus and Champa just finished a training match with Gogeta. They are both very tired and injured, and Gogeta looks a little pensive and also satisfied. It was at this point in training that Beerus and Champa showed their new transformations for the first time, which surprised Gogeta positively. Those transformations you guys just used are incredible. The increase in power you had was extraordinary. Exalts the most experienced warrior. He then makes his comments and observations. The problem is that such an exponential increase in power wears your body down a lot. To control this well enough to not have such a high energy cost, it will take some time. And you don't have that time until the fight to come. You need to avoid using these transformations. Because once you transform, you will only last a short time in battle. And then, you will no longer be able to fight. Use these new powers only when strictly necessary. Beerus and Champa are discouraged when they hear this and ask if there is another way for them to progress and last longer during the battle. Gogeta says there is a way, which is fusion. With this technique, you will add and multiply your powers to levels far beyond what you could achieve alone. You have similar power levels, in addition to being twin brothers. Therefore, you are compatible in many aspects. I see no reason why a very powerful fusion wouldn't result from you. Beerus and Champa don't really like the idea of merging. Gogeta insists on at least teaching them the technique in case it becomes necessary at some point. Returning to the present time, Champa says that this moment of need has arrived and they need to do this at once or they will die. Beerus, very grumpy, accepts. Champa raises his hands and uses his mental strength to lift a curtain of dust. Whis asks why they are doing this and warns that they won't be able to escape him. He extends one of his hands and releases a blast of power against the boys. However, he is amazed to see his energy being completely repelled by a true hurricane of power that expands. Startled, Whis quickly realizes that a being of great power has just been born in that place. Not only Whis realizes this, but everyone present on that immense battlefield. A new being that masters the energy of destruction appears, and he names himself Champerus. Whis is on alert with the appearance of this new opponent, putting himself in a combat stance again, this time with a much more serious look. Bulla advances against Rum, launching a series of quick punches and kicks, none of which hit the evil angel, who proves to be superior in technique and agility. Super Android 16 takes advantage of the gap left by Bulla's movements and fires a powerful beam of energy towards Rum. She dodges easily, however, 16 doesn't give up and continues forward with a strong punch. Rum stops the blow using only one hand. Bulla appears on the opposite side, throwing a punch energized with the Super Saiyan 4's flaming key. Rum also stops this blow, with a single squeeze causing the fiery energy to extinguish from the youngest warrior's fist. With a slight movement, she throws Bulla away, causing the Saiyan to collide violently with the ground. Super 16 makes a direct attack, his hands transforming into cannons that unleash a hail of explosions. Rum deftly avoids it, moving in a zigzag pattern to dodge each blast. Even so, some explosions graze her, causing slight burns to her angelic skin. She reaches Super 16, ready to land a powerful blow. Bulla intervenes, taking to the skies with a strong upward punch that Rum needs to dodge by retreating from her attempted attack against Super 16. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Super 16 fires an energy blast from his arm cannons, directing it directly at Rum. She tries to dodge, but the proximity of the attack makes it impossible to avoid completely. The beam hits her shoulder, making her scream in pain and rage. Bulla follows with a spinning kick 
hitting the side of Rom's head and sending her staggering away. Powering up one of his arms to the maximum, Super 16 lunges with an extremely powerful punch which Rum is unable to block without being knocked off balance by the impact of the blow. Bulla wastes no time and, exploiting the opening, discharges a powerful wave of energy directly into Rum's chest. The evil angel is thrown backwards sliding across the floor. She slowly gets up and is startled to see blood running from her mouth. Rum is visibly shaken at the sight of her own blood questioning how these worms dare harm her beautiful body. Angry, she approaches with impressive speed, focusing on Bula. Super 16 interferes, placing himself in front of the ally, trying a series of energy blasts against the enemy. Rum dodges with supernatural agility, until she finally comes to Super 16 with furious counterattacks saying that if he insists, she will finish him first. Bula tries to intervene, launching a wave of key to divert Rom's attention. But the angel moves quickly, dodging Bulla's attack and continuing her offensive against Super 16. Rom then gathers power in her hands, creating a pulsating black sphere. Before Super 16 can react, she throws the sphere straight at his chest. The explosion is intense, involving Super 16. He is thrown back, falling to his knees, his metallic body visibly damaged. Sparks fly from his joints. Bulla shouts, running towards her ally. Before she can approach him, her path is blocked by a giant magical wall generated by Rum. Not so fast, she says, with an angelic cruel smile. Rum turns to deliver a final blow to Super Android 16. An intense discharge of energy propagated in the form of a wave of power that destroys Super 16's entire body without leaving any trace of his existence. Bulla curses Rum who responds with a satisfied expression and states that she's the next. In the world of the gods, intense pain affects Daishinkan, punishing his body to the point that his skin cracks more and more, causing the angel to scream and moan in agony beside him. Zamasu no longer knows what to do. Daishinkan says that they need to end this as quickly as possible, since soon the evil energy of the evil seed will begin to leak intensely from his body. Zamasu says that unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be close to the end, much less with a resolution in their favor. If it continues like this, I will need to do that thing, says the god of creation of the great universe, referring to something that, from his expression, he certainly does not want to do. Rum dodges a punch from Bula and lands a violent kick to her stomach, making the Saiyan double over in pain. Before Bula can recover, Rum grabs her by the hair and slams her into the ground with brutal force. When Bula tries to get up, Rum is already on her, targeting her with a sequence of fast and powerful punches that leave her stunned and bloody. You're finished, proclaims Rum pulling the Saiyan by her hair again and lifting her off the ground. The angel fires a blast of energy directly at Bula's chest, throwing her backwards, lying on the ground, panting. Every breath is an effort, her body sore and covered in wounds. Rum slowly approaches, her eyes full of triumph. You have nothing left, give up. She extends her hand to her fallen enemy and saying goodbye, executes the final attack. However, Mysteriously, Rom's energy is defended by something, being bounced in other directions and not reaching the target. The person responsible for this was Bulma, who has just defended her daughter with an energy shield from her technological suit. You're wrong, Bulma responds to Rum. She still has her mother. Bulma points her hand and fires a large energy torrent at Rum, which is also defended with an energy shield created by the angel. Bula despairs when she sees her mother there and screams at her to back down immediately as she is not capable of dealing with an angel, even with this advanced suit. Bulma says she can never think of backing down when her daughter is about to be killed. How touching, Ram says sarcastically. But I will have no mercy. I will destroy both of you without hesitation. Bulma prepares for the clash. You will not touch my daughter, you vulgar woman. Vulgar woman! Ram repeats what was said to her, indignant. Bulma projects herself against Rum, propelled by powerful jets of energy, released by her suit's boots, while through the suit's hands, she fires several energized attacks. Rum deflects each of the shots with her bare hands, until when Bulma reaches her, she uses her forearm to stop a punch from the woman, which, thanks to the power of the technological suit, surprises the angel with its power. Bula tries her best to stay on her feet, 
only to fall to her knees the next moment, her willpower overwhelmed by the various wounds and injuries all over her body. Unable to do anything for her mother by herself, she makes her voice echo across the battlefield in a scream, calling for someone's help. Bula's cry reaches Gogeta's ears, who at that moment engages in an increasingly fervent fight against Kusu, their energies colliding in the air. The battlefield becomes a scene of pure destruction, with the ground shattering and the sky filling with energy blasts. The combat is at such a high level that time seems to slow down. At the same moment he hears Bula's voice, Gogeta prepares to help. Unfortunately, Kusu also hears it and quickly summons her magic staff to form a large energy barrier around the two, which makes it impossible for Gogeta to teleport. You will only get out of here if you defeat me, she says. This irritates Gogeta, who can do nothing but continue the fight, this time with an even greater urgency to win. Gohan also hears his half-sister's desperate plea. When he thinks about going to help, Wynek reminds him of their fight by frantically spinning towards him and trying a kick which the beastly warrior dodges. After dodging, Gohan tries to go to Bula and Bulma. Wynek doesn't allow it, moving at an almost instantaneous speed in front of him. You interrupted me when I was going to destroy that android, so I will do the same with your rescue, says the angel. As Bula struggles to react, her mother Bulma boldly charges at Rum, fueled by fierce persistence. Bulma's technological suit shines brightly, all its resources being used to confront the evil angel, pushing it to the limit. Bulma delivers a sequence of powerful energy blasts, each one skillfully blocked by Rum, who appears unfazed. Bulla watches with growing anguish. She knows her mother is risking everything to protect her, and recognizes the immense power inequality between Bulma and Rum. Despite the disparity in strength, Bulma continues to fight with all her ingenuity. Gogeta raises his ki in a way that begins to overpower Kusus, this time coercing Daishinkan's firstborn daughter to the point that she can barely react to his attacks. Gogeta's punches and kicks inevitably break through Kusus' guard, who now has limited movement thanks to the shield she made to trap him, and therefore has few options other than forcing herself to maintain a direct confrontation. The Shinken warrior, motivated to end this quickly, no longer worries about saving energy, attacking her entire body with punches of titanic power. Bula once again shouts for her mother to back off. Bulma refuses. She highlights that she created this costume precisely so that weaker beings can face stronger beings. If she can't use this to protect her own daughter, then it means her work was worthless. Rum, in turn, seems to have no desire to prolong that. She takes advantage of a gap in Bulma's attack and launches a wave of dark energy that hits the technological suit with great power. Bulma tries to resist, using the suit's shields and defenses to protect herself. The efforts end up being futile, as Ram's attack level is disproportionate. The costume goes into disrepair. Tiny cracks appear in the armor, and systems gradually begin to fail. The heat of the fight between Gogeta and Kusu continues to increase, the Saiyan exerting increasing pressure on the evil angel. The battlefield is a scene of total destruction, with craters and flames resulting from its energy explosions. Explosions of impact with tremendous force are generated from the strong blows that Gogeta hits throughout Kusu's body, making her less and less able to defend herself thanks to the damage and injuries acquired exponentially. Gogeta, knowing he doesn't have much time to save Bulma, rushes to finish the fight, growing his strength even more. The time has come to end this, he announces, his eyes shining with tenacity. After gathering a vast collection of energy in one of his fists, the Saiyan focuses on a vital point to finally deliver his final punch, shattering Kusu's chest and back. She feels the crushing pressure of the blow and screams in frustration and pain as her barrier crumbles. It's over, says the Shinken warrior. Not yet, she opposes. Kusu quickly makes her magic stuff appear in her hand, evoking the stuff's power to go back in time a few seconds. And then, when Gogeta is about to punch her, Kusu dodges millimeters to the Saiyan's complete shock. Next, she aims at an opening left at the time of the punch to cross Gogeta's body using the magic staff. I got you, Gogeta! She smiles euphorically. The smile doesn't last long, because in the next second, Gogeta's body falls apart like a mirage, 
scaring Kusu. The scare is even greater when he appears behind her, once again crossing her body with his arm. With her fragilized voice and choking on the blood spilling from her mouth, Kusu asks what he did. Gogeta says that the moment he realized she went back in time, he used Hit's time skip to advance a few thousandths of a second in time to avoid the counter-attack and also leave an after image in the present to distract her. You fought very well. But it's over, he says. Kusu doesn't give up. She uses her last strength to hold Gogeta's arm and begins to concentrate her energy very quickly. Daishinkan's eldest daughter says that if she dies, at least she will take him with her. And Gogeta better not try to escape because this explosion, if not contained, will spread throughout hell and kill his friends. Seeing that this isn't a bluff and also not having time to react otherwise, all Gogeta can do is create a barrier around him and Kusu. A thousandth of a second later, Daishinkan's first daughter self-destructs, releasing overwhelming power, which ends up being contained in Gogeta's barrier, which disappears shortly afterwards. Bulma struggles with all her strength to stay upright. Despite this, she is clearly in trouble in the face of the relentless strength of an angel. Bula, helplessly watching the fight, feels a lump in her throat because she can't do anything. Rum finally increases the vehemence of her attacks. She concentrates even more power into one last devastating blow, finally breaking through the last defenses of Bulma's suit. The dark energy completely surrounds Bulma, beginning to shatter the armor that protects her. Bulla screams in horror as the armor breaks apart due to the energy that surrounds it, Bulma's face is revealed. Her expression is sad as she looks at her daughter with watery eyes. She apologizes to Bulla for not being able to protect her until the end, but asks that her daughter survive no matter what. Before long, Bulma's body is consumed and disappears in an explosion. Bulla can't even scream. She just stares open-mouthed, intense tears streaming down her face. A funereal silence falls, except for the crackle of debris and smoke that hangs in the air. She was very brave, but in the end it was stupid to face me like that when she was so weak. Rum breaks the silence by praising and then criticizing the one she just killed. Afterwards, she looks at Bulla, telling her that she will be next. Bulla ignores everything the angel says, just staring in astonishment at the place where her mother disappeared from existence. Gogeta arrives next to her with a teleport. He apologizes, explaining that he had to contain Kusu's outburst and then heal for having received all that at point-blank range. Bula also ignores Gogeta. She gets up with difficulty, her legs shaking and hatred burning in her heart. Bula feels an overwhelming pain in her chest an intense mix of grief and anger that begins to boil inside her. The sight of her mother being consumed by Rum's dark energy sets her heart on fire with relentless fury. Something starts to change. Bula's aura flickers and grows, pulsing with an energy that intensifies by the second. Bulma's daughter's pain and fury turn into a scream of pure agony and rage. Her key explodes in a wave of tremendous energy, lighting up the battlefield. Her hair stands up and begins to grow, stretching almost to the height of her knees, while a white and silver color surrounds them. Her skin takes on a reddish hue, and eyes take on a vibrant red glow. A bright and powerful aura radiates from her body, reflecting a strength that surpasses anything she has ever displayed before. Power emanates from her in waves, causing the ground to shake and the air to vibrate around her. The impetuosity of her transformation is palpable, a manifestation of the absolute power she now possesses. Bulla, Vegito's daughter, shows the world her Super Saiyan 5. You're going to pay for this, rum! The Saiyan screams, her voice reverberating with newfound power and ravenous determination. Rum takes a step back, surprised and alarmed by the transformation of her opponent that she previously thought was finished. The Saiyan, now in her most powerful form, is an imposing and terrifying sight, a symbol of pure strength and indomitable will. She knows she has to fight to the end, not only for herself, but also for her mother's sacrifice. Beside her, Gogeta remembers that in the last few days of their training period, Bula, in a moment of extreme exertion, quickly showed this form by accident. He knew that if she manifested this power on the battlefield, he could rest assured. 
I will leave this opponent in your hands, he says. Thanks, she says. Gogeta realized that at this moment, with Bula's power rising, the attention of someone living in the deepest zones of hell was drawn. He has fully awakened, the Shinken warrior comments aloud to himself. In the deepest layer of hell, he remains static enveloped in a great evil aura. However, his attention is caught by the emergence of a great power that is familiar to him, the power of Bulla. The being consumed by darkness then takes flight, heading towards whatever catches his attention, with astronomical speed crossing the infernal layers. Against him comes Gogeta, who left the battlefield as soon as he noticed his complete awakening. The reunion is about to happen. In parallel to this, the battle between the great universe and the evil angels becomes increasingly painful for both sides as it approaches its end. What will be the outcome of all this? Find out in the next episodes of Dragon Ball Shinken. To show that you've come this far and want to see the next episode of Dragon Ball Shinken published faster, comment now. Gogeta Shinken vs Demon Vegito. The goal for the next episode to be made faster is 150 comments. Also, leave a like to help the video reach here on the platform and show that you approve when we bring Dragon Ball Shinken videos. The goal for the next video to be published faster is 1500 likes. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next Dragon Ball Shinken videos and other content on the channel. And if you can help us directly with a donation, visit our Patreon through the link in the video description and pinned comment or with a super thanks. I really appreciate everyone who stayed until now, commented, liked, signed up and helped with some value. You are the true heroes of this channel. A big hug to everyone and I'll see you in the next video.